Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Selenium Python tutorial, we are going to learn how you can pass the data from the Excel file into your test script and do the data driven testing. So previously we have understood about the file data decorator, right? So wherein we have understood how you can read the data from the JSON file or the YAML file. Now, if you want to externalize your data to the Excel file or CSV file, how you can read that data and use it in your test cases. That's what we are going to learn. So let's get started. So we have understood about the data decorator right in the very first sort of data driven testing tutorial and this data decorator accepts the list or tuple of data and we can then unpack it right so there is an unpack decorator as well which unpacks the data that you provide here as form of the tuple so it basically unpacks it so whether you provide list or, or tuple it will unpack and provide it to the parameters that you have defined in this particular method okay so if somehow we are able to write a utility which will read the data from from the excel file okay and excel file i have created here so in the test data i have created this test data.excel and we know that when we are searching the flights these are the four arguments that we need to pass in order to search the flight right so my test data requires going from going to date and stops so if i am able to provide this data from excel and this data is being stored into a list so each set of data is for one particular test case so if somehow we write the utility to read this data store it in a list and one set of data is then passed basically to this particular data decorator right so we'll be able to run this particular test case in data driven format wherein my data will be coming from the excel file okay so let's see how we can do it it's very simple utility that you have to write and i have already explained about open pi excel and if we go to the learn python project which i have covered previously and in file io demo i have explained about the read xlsx demo right so this is the code that we have written to read the data from the excel file now we'll use the same code we'll have to update few things in this particular code so let me copy it and go back to our test framework demo project and in the utilities we will create a utility so what i'll do is i will simply create a new method i'll name it as read read data from excel and this requires okay let let it be um let it be as is at the moment and let me paste everything here okay so i'll remove all the commented lines from this code and we need to import this line right so in order to use open pi excel we need to import this okay so i'll put the import at the top and from open pi excel we are importing the workbook and load workbook because we need to load the workbook and read the data from it okay so within this method we need to do certain changes so if you see at the moment we are hard coding the file name here okay so the first thing we do not want to hard code any of the values within this method because if this method is being called the caller needs to provide these values so if you as a tester want to test a test case for which there is a test data file that you have created and you want to pass that file location you pass that in your test case other tester can pass the data for some other test case that can be provided here right so i'll name it as file name so i'll just say file name needs to be passed right file underscore name and instead of hard coding this xlsx thing i will simply say file name will come from this method whosoever calls it and then we need to pass the sheet right so i'll just say sheet okay and and this is the sheet that is there in the excel right so you can have multiple sheets in the excel so we'll simply replace that with the sheet now there are few more changes that we need to do we are printing the values here but we need to now store the values into the list so the first thing we have to do is we have to define the empty list which will store these values after reading these values from the excel file so i'll say data list okay and just declare an empty list okay just with these brackets empty list has been declared the next thing is the range is all good these these loops are all good we are getting the max row and max column right so to get the column count and row count i have explained all this in very very detail in previous tutorial and in python so go ahead if you are confused about this logic and learn all of it prior to coming this particular tutorial so now what we need to do is we need to basically from this is the range for the this particular 
for loop is for the row if you see so this is for the row and then this is for the column right so when we are reading the row after the row has been read we need to store that particular data in one list right in one particular list that this is one set of data or row of data that needs to be passed as one test case so here as well we need to declare an empty list which will store just the row data so data list will store all the list of data so basically when we say data list data list will store row number two three four and five right so it will store all of that data but row data will only store these four values for each row right so it will be sort of a list of lists wherein you have multiple list of data within this particular data list now when we have a row data the next thing here instead of printing the data Data on the console what we have to do is when we are iterating through the columns for each row once the row data has been read we want to store it into the row list so what we'll do is we have the method row dot append okay so there is a row dot append function which will append the value that is being read so this is this is the statement that reads the value i won't use any delimiter as such we'll remove that and now this row dot append will append the value as it is read in the column into this row list okay the next statement is basically once this row has been read okay then after this loop has finished will come out of the loop so basically once the column loop has finished for each row once it is finished then we know that the row data for second row or first row basically say for example it's reading this particular data that has been finished okay one more thing here you we know that we are starting from row one but if we see here the row one is basically the headers we don't need the headers so where we can start we can start from row number two so once the row number two starts it reads that row after this row we want to append that row into the data list right so that will be row number one in the data list so what we'll do is we'll simply say data list dot append again and what will append will append row there okay so once the row has been read stored in the list now append that row into the data list so that we can pass the whole data to the test case right so this will append the list to the data list and it will come to the second row right so basically third row to the upper loop again and it will iterate through the row number three append that data into the data list and do until there is a max row and column until there are columns in the sheet that's what we have done here okay once this is all done once all the loops are finished right so once we come out of this loop we want to just say return this data list right so because whichever function or whichever method is calling this particular method right whichever test is calling this method needs to get the data list from the excel sheet right so once the data list has been read once the data has been read from the excel you return it so that it is available to the test case okay this is the utility that you have to write in order to handle the reading of the data from excel sheet now this is not written into try except format so except handling you have to always make sure that you implement in your every piece of code that you write so if you think that you that your code is can can break or it needs to have the exception handling being implemented you have to implement it right so I'm not explaining exception handling as part of this tutorial or the framework because just to avoid over complexity in the framework just to explain you the core functionality or the core concept in that particular video and not to add too many things in it but exception handling as we have included in the try accept form you have to just surround your code into try accept format whenever you are writing utility or anything that you think that needs to be handled okay so once this utility is done okay what we need to do is we need to go back to our test case right so now we know that the utility that we have written okay is in the utils so this utils let me close uh, this particular okay let me close this sheet and i'll save it now this particular test right it it already imports utils class so because i have written utilities this read data from excel utility in the utils class so i do not need to import it again but if you have written this particular method in some other class say for example within utilities you have created another class then you have to in you have to import that statement here okay before you can use it that's a basic thing now within this data what we have to provide is we have to provide we have to call that method that we have declared here in the utils right so read data 
from Excel. So in order to call that, what we have to do is we have to simply say utils and then say dot and read data from Excel, right? So now this is reading data from Excel. And now we know that when we read the data from Excel, what we need to provide is we need to provide the file name, right? And the sheet, okay? So file name is the file name which we want to read. So we want to read this test data.excel. You can have any other test data file. Okay. So simply copy the path for it. Okay. And in the location here, you just provide that path. And in Windows, you just surround the backslashes with two of those. Okay. And then we have to, the second argument is the sheet name, right? So what is the sheet name? If we open this test data Excel, this is the sheet name, right? Sheet one. Okay. If it has been renamed, you change it accordingly. So at the moment it's sheet one. So I'll provide the sheet name. So these are the two arguments that I have to provide when I'm using this read data from Excel and then use this unpack. Okay, this unpack decorator understands that I am expecting a list of items from here from this particular, you know, data decorator and I have to unpack those and assign to the parameters that are being defined here, right? The very important thing here is when we are, when you are calling this utils.read data from Excel, you have to use the star. So what this star is all about, this star shows that this particular method that you are calling, right? it returns the list of items okay so when you within the data attribute within the data annotation whatever values are being returned this will ensure that this is list of data that needs to be unpacked right so this star is mandatory there and that should be pretty much it because now we have written the utility to read the data from excel okay which will be basically read from the excel and will be provided in the form of list to this data decorator will be unpacked right and then will be provided to the methods okay so let's quickly go ahead and run the test case and see that everything is working perfectly fine right so we are in this location where our project is test framework demo so in order to run the test case we'll simply use pytest v and we'll provide the browser okay and let's run it in the firefox browser this time okay so i'll say firefox browser and provide the url all right let's hit enter and see if everything is working as expected so there are four sets of data you can see that first set has been started with the first set of data you can see it has been unpacked and available let's see that it actually populates all that data provides the executes the test case exactly the same way and because there are four set of data in our file that means four test executions will happen with different set of data so there are four test cases that are going to execute and all this data is basically coming from excel file okay so it has executed the first test case running the second test case with different set of values you can see from bombay to new delhi selected different date scrolling to the bottom it should select two stops this time i think i have passed two stops yes and should verify and it has failed the verification that's absolutely fine but test case is running it's pulling data third execution you'll see that the third execution that is happening there has been some issue with the third execution that's absolutely fine we know that the data is actually getting populated from the sheet so at the moment we are not worried about the failure or the passage passing rate we are just ensuring that we learn how you will fetch the data from the excel file and run your test cases accordingly okay so there have been failures but you can see that now three failed and one passed right so four executions have happened with the set of data four set of data that we have passed here okay there were some failures but that's absolutely fine you can fix those data issues etc later right so we have seen that it has executed these four rows with four set of data and four executions have happened and that is clearly shown in our execution result right so you can see how reading the data from the excel file is so easy with just simple utility that you write and you will be able to read the data and use it in your test case and with just one particular test case you are able to see how much extra coverage you will get right so this is the whole advantage of writing the overall framework spending time there because over the period of time your test case writing will become so easy and so quick that you won't have to spend too much time if you spend good amount of time in the framework design and making it proper so that it suits your project needs okay so that's pretty much all about how you can read the data from the excel file and do data driven testing in selenium python i hope this was helpful thank you very much for watching